And so now let's take a look at Roman numeral 7 and just a review of England versus colonial America. We'll compare the English tradition to how this kind of looks somewhat with the colonial tradition, with the political and governmental structure of the two um, in, in comparison. So for the English tradition with the Magna Carta, we talked about that a little earlier where the nobility forced King John I of England in 1215 AD to follow the law just like everybody else, and that gets into a couple of things with England. One of those is being equal protection under the law, equal treatment, and also rule of law. In colonial tradition, that comes up with the idea of a charter, like Virginia's uh, Jamestown, in terms of setting up a charter. Um, also, it's not only just uh, Jamestown, Virginia, but it's also the Mayflower Compact, with the direct democracy and everybody agreeing to follow the law. Eventually, in colonial America, it also becomes part of our Constitution, with Amendment 14. Yeah, I hope you're saying it. Equal protection under the law. And the concept, as we'll study a little bit later, called rule of law. Very simple principle of the Constitution. It just means everybody will follow the law, including our leaders. Also part of English tradition is England, England's Parliament, which is a lawmaking body similar to today's Congress. And it's the most powerful branch of English government when you compare the Parliament versus the King. And in colonial tradition, it's the Virginia House of Burgesses. It's a representative democracy. So part of England's parliament, even in the 1600s, the House of Commons, even though it's not really made up of commoners, but really wealthier people that are not necessarily nobility, but they are elected to parliament. And in Virginia, in the House of Burgesses, you also have a representative democracy. The English Bill of Rights in the colonial tradition in 1689, of course, basically said that the king would have to seek parliament's consent before doing certain things like levying taxes on the people. And in the colonial tradition, we have the Mayflower Compact again with majority rules, a direct democracy where you have to basically pass the will of one person through the will of everyone. And that's similar to what we're doing in the English Bill of Rights in the 1600s. And last, I'll have to scroll down a little bit, we have common law, which is a system based on, you know, tradition and custom and precedent. And that actually applies to a lot of our laws in not only colonial America, but also today about property, contracts, personal injury laws are based on um, English common law as well. So you have some similar traditions going from England to colonial America that actually exist even today in the U.S. Constitution, as we'll see in Unit 3. And so this was a very quick overview, about a three or four minute review of the things we have seen in colonial America that comes from England.